Hi, I'm Ray Gordon. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is a an overview video of um, the tunnel approach that I'm going to be teaching through the Misanthropic Chess series. I've decided not to go through the basics and teaching the rules. You can learn that elsewhere. Please do. You're probably not even ready for these lessons if you don't know the basics and the rules. That includes en passant, stalemate, where the kings go, how to castle, get all that done now. Threefold repetition, 50 move rule, it's all there. Get a copy of the official rules of chess, which you can probably download now or you can get. I used to have a rule book and I actually carried it with me because I used to have it in coffee houses in case somebody cited something they thought was a rule. I'm like, here, this is the rule book. You know, so uh, that's just useful. Now, what is the tunnel exactly? A tunnel is based on, actually, it's kind of based on what Carlson does by tunneling to the middle game and outbooking everybody in the end game. The end game is so rich that if you're better than somebody in the end game, you might win 90% like Carlson. You'll look like a god, but he's really not doing that much. He's just studying the part of the game where you can win much more easily. The tunnel does the opposite, though. Checkers was solved to a forced draw to the point where certain openings had to be banned. Chess has more or less been solved to a forced draw, although chat GPT tends to tell me it's not. No, we haven't brute force calculated every line, but all indications are it's a forced draw. Now, given that, trying for an advantage in the opening would be hope chess, because the best you can expect is a draw. That means actually black has the advantage, because black is supposed to only need to draw and white needs to win. So black can get what they want by force, white cannot. That's very important, actually. Now, you see, when Fisher said he plays to win as black, actually, he was probably playing the draw as black, but his opponent couldn't handle that, would overextend, try for the win, and Fisher would win. Or the opponent lacked the technique to hold the draw, and Fisher would win. That's how you get your wins with the tunnel. All right, let's assume chess is a force draw. There have to be opening lines which prove this. Which lines are those? I've arrived at E3 and E6. Now, if E3 and E6 are drawn and they reduce homework to the point where you don't have to study all these main lines, then they're preferable because you're getting the same equality out of the opening, but you're doing it without a lot of detours. You're less likely to get ambushed, taken out of book. Your repertoire is going to be bulletproof, and you can study it more. Also, since you're not changing your repertoire, every move you uh, tunnel out further will improve your rating and... All the extra free time you have, you can devote to things like studying Kasparian's 2,545 end games, ECM's 3,001 middle games. Chess is like classical piano, and it should be practiced as such. If you really want to become a champion, as Paul, uh, Paul Bryant, I think, said, Bear Bryant, uh, that most people want to win, but they don't want to prepare to win. Realize this is gamer culture now. Gamers just, I mean, they do it all the time, every day, and, you know, they're hardcore. The way Fisher trained is the way your average gamer trains. So, in a sense, my arcade training has kept me current with these people. But, you know, in the 1980s, it was nothing. There was tons of low-hanging fruit, you know. Just with some basic study, you could get to expert without a difficult, you know, it wasn't that difficult. So, now it's not that difficult in that everything is out there, but there's a lot to memorize and internalize. Also, when you construct a repertoire, if you're randomly studying lines going, oh, I like the Queen's Indian, and against this, I like that, I don't have an against this. I play the tunnel. Everything is considered a main line against it. I might see any move. Any move I might run into is given the same main line treatment. I play one-minute games to rehearse it and memorize it. And then what you see there is um, Stockfish and the Fritz interface. Or the Fritz interface is actually on the left there. Right after the game is over, I um, right after the game is over, I copy it on line chess. You have the share. You copy the text, go into Fritz, and you click paste game. The game shows up. You run it through. There's the repertoire. Each move, I will get to the point where I made either the wrong move, my opponent deviated, or whatever, and then I'll fix the uh, repertoire. Yeah, there's an allow move adding feature there. So if you do this systematically and you build a repertoire with a purpose, you will go very far. And rather than talk a lot about how I constructed the repertoire, which I might do, um, yeah, if I get a video going or something. Um, actually, I, there is a way I can do that. It's just not with that setup. But uh, just by seeing me stream, and I, I guess I can comment sometimes on it. 
Uh, I'll keep the camera up once in a while, but for the most part, I'll be playing with music. Uh, 60 Seconds of Hell, that's what I look to bring, so look forward to that. Anyhow, uh, if you're looking to build an opening repertoire, this will be, I mean, you'll be booked up to move 10, 15, 20, you almost never get an inferior position, but it's a long-term investment. You have to have faith in this. It's very easy to get another 200 rating points, 300 rating points, any old way. You can buy all those expensive courses or whatever, and you, you might improve. But this is something that will take you to the highest levels of chess. And if you are young with a lot of time to perfect this repertoire, you will probably be unbeatable well <laughs> well before you are too old to play. Let's just say that. I'm 56, so I don't know how much time I have left. And it took me 35 years to actually construct this. I Because I didn't care if I, you know, chess was always what I did when I was bored, I had no time clock, no, t no, no career trajectory. I could really delve into the game and study it. And the tunnel is actually kind of like an umbrella that covers all the things I've studied. Like, you can't execute the tunnel unless you've already studied a lot of the openings into which it transposes. So this is not as simple as the Benko tunnel. But it is so effective that it is actually worth the extra homework to do. But yeah, it's going to take a while to leverage this. But no time to start like the present. So anyhow, I'm Ray Gordon, I'm signing off for now, and I will catch all of you soon. Bye-bye.